So I've already introduced myself and where I'm from. And currently my um, PowerPoint is um, loading. So um, the purpose of this talk is basically to address the importance of protecting data. And so let's start out with a definition of what data protection is. Data protection is defined as the law which is designed to protect personal information which is collected, processed, and stored by automated means are intended to be a part of a filing system. And we already know different organizations are collecting you know, data um, from various um, sources. I know being a part of a university, we are always collecting data um, from my students. And, and that's really why I took an initial interest in data protection because I was really concerned about whether or not the student's data was being protected. And so because of technologies and the different devices that we use, you know, um, we share so much data across the various types of technology. Um, in addition to that, there's a lot of information and data that's out there that's very, very sensitive. And these, um, these various types of data is in danger of being stolen. And so we have organizations like governments and, and different um, um, industry um, um, that have understood data um, protection and how important it is to secure the data. Um, and in, in addition, personal information should always be protected and the principles of data protection should always be followed. And so here what I have are some principles of data protection, which include there should be no limits to what is collected. There should be limits on the collection of personal information. Data should be obtained by lawful and fair means, which is very, very important because we wanna be very careful how we collect data and not only that, how we share data as well. Data should be obtained with the consent of the individual. I mean, really, there should be no hidden um, practices. Um, the information that submitted or shared should be correct. Personal information should be relevant to the purposes for which it's going to be used. And really, um, organizations or, or uh, government should not be collecting data that is not relevant. Um, information should be accurate, complete, and current. Um, there should be no secret purpose. And the purpose for which the information should be specified uh, at the time of data collection should only be used for the agreed upon purposes. And, and we all know that the information must be secure. And lastly, there must be no creeping purposes. I think it's important important to um, talk about the relevance of um, data protection. As you can see from the diagram that the first data protection law involved back in 1970 in, in Germany, okay? Um, data protection um, was of little to no relevance as you can see from the diagram in the mid um, 90s, um, all the way from the mainframe up to 1970 down to the Internet of Things in um, 20, um, 2021. Um, I'm positive that um, when the Internet was first created, that um, the developers of the Internet did not anticipate such a wide scale use. I, and definitely, they didn't consider um, software security. But today, it's very imperative as we b develop software that we take seriously give serious consideration to software security. But data protection has come a long way and has influenced the creation of uh, the discipline of cryptography and encryption. And it's important that strategies are uh, continue to be implemented to secure data. So I wanna share with you um, some of the best practices for 
protecting data. Um, um, there are eight, um, the lockdown data access, uh, remembering the basis. And I'm gonna talk about each of, um, one of these in a little bit more detail in the following slides. Continue to focus on compliance, watch out for advanced cyber crime tactics, embrace multi-factor authentication, explore AI, respect customer privacy and protect your public health information. So when we talk about lockdown access, I think it's important that um, we take extra care to guard against in unauthorized access. Um, there are so many um, accidents that can happen um, unintentionally, particularly um, if the data gets in the hands of the wrong people. And so it's smart to try to head off some of these issues by investing in what we call a data collection solution. And so in, in, in this way, um, the data will get to the right people. Remember the basics. Um, and remembering the basics, it's important that uh, we make sure that there are no gaps in your data security that could expose customer data. And we've seen several examples of this in the past for customer data um, being wrongfully obtained by ha hackers. And so um, it's important that we make sure that our, data, our software is secure. Continue to focus on compliance. Um, the general data protection regulation took effect in Europe um, back in 2018. And, and sometimes um, organizations um, may not, you know, may have some loopholes in their policies or they may um, drop the ball, so to speak. But um, back in um, recently, um, Google was fined $57 million um, um, by the French regulatory body CNIL. And so um, it's just important that um, we focus on compliance because you know, if certain organizations do not focus on the different compliance uh, regulations, we can be impacted. Now, we do know that the United States, we do not necessarily follow the GDPR just of, uh, as of today, um, but there are some organizations, I believe the state of California um, had, has some customer regulations that they've developed and they are following, which is very similar to the GDPR. And as I think about the GDPR and I think about um, students on our different college campuses and their data, I wonder how our universities and our colleges are, you know, are, are following certain policy or even uh, uh, if they even have policies on compliance and making sure that student data is secure. So I think it's important that we continue to make data privacy and GDPR compliance a focus. Also, uh, it's important to watch out for advanced cyber crime tactics. Um, th there is something that's called um, chatbots, um, AI chatbots chatbots which are used for malicious purposes. Um, chatbots could also be used to carry out social engineering attacks and infiltrate websites. So, um, um, so it's important that, um, that we watch out for these advanced cyber crime tactics because there are um, different types of cyber attacks such as spear phishing, which target individuals and it uses specific information um, to explore it um, for criminal purposes. So it's just important that we um, watch out for these um, cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. Another best practice is embrace multi-factor authentication. So, you know, gone are the days of just entering in your password to just you know access you know your email or um, bank accounts or other types of um, systems. So it's important um, that um, organizations embrace multi-factor 
authentication. Um, there are different tools that are out there that will allow you to implement some type of multi-factor authentication. I know at my university, um, when I get ready to access my email, of course I enter my password, but before I can even access my email, I'm prompted with a telephone call from the system and they asked me to validate who I am. So we have this dual type of authentication that we have to do, but you don't have to just have duo, you can have trio or quad um, um, factor type authentication. Um, another um, best practice is to explore AI explore the benefits of using AI software um, for your own cybersecurity efforts, but make sure to do plenty of research on, you know, the company that you choose because you want to make sure um, it meets your needs. Respect customer privacy, even if it's not the law. Yes, um, the United States does not have GDPR implemented like um, Europe does, um, but it's, it's important that we um, respect our customers' privacy. Uh, California has already passed a consumer privacy law um, that's similar to the GDPR. And if you're not familiar uh, with GDPR, I'm sure you all are, but you can just kind of Google that if you just get more information. I think when I first start working with my students and I, that's, that's when I really first learned about GDPR and I thought about it and as I mentioned earlier in the context of my, my students and the students uh, on our campus, their, their privacy and I was concerned about their data being secure. And I was also concerned about hackers inf infiltrating um, our system on our college campus. And not only that, I was also concerned about if our university actually had policies on how we protect student data. Mm -hmm. And lastly, protect your personal health information. Um, medical data is sought after on the dark web, which costs up to $60 per medical record. Um, um, cyber, criminal, cyber criminals do not care what systems they they infiltrate. Um, they infiltrate not just your email, your social media accounts, but they are also infiltrating um, the databases of healthcare organizations. So um, yes, we do have HIPAA laws and we have FERPA, but it's important that we protect personal health um, information. So as I bring my talk to a close, I just want to uh, remind everyone that it's important that we keep all our devices protected. I know with my own um, personal device, my laptop was my desktop, I frequently change my password and I do have some secure software that's on my computer, but even having the camera um, I make sure even when, before I go to bed, I make sure my camera on all my devices, uh, whether it's a desktop or laptop or clothes. Um, it's important to avoid harsh phishing emails, um, encrypt data and be aware, aware of imposters. And lastly, um, um, just keep in mind these safeguards for protecting data um, is so vital to, um, the way we do business every day, all organization was government, educational institutions, um, private sectors. Um, it's important that personal information is disclosed or user retained only for the purpose for which it's intended. We should not really collect information uh, uh, unnecessarily. Uh, we must ensure that the data is secure and just use uh, reasonable safeguards to, to protect um, uh, the user's data or the customer's data. Uh, remember that there should be no secret organizations, sources, or processing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also important that consumers be made aware of the collection in use of the of information. Because I know sometimes when I'm online and I'm filling out different types of forms, 
I'm careful about the data that I put in. And, and sometimes, you know, um, we're asked for like, um, say for example, phone numbers. I'm not so quick to get out, give out my cell phone number. Um, um, and sad to say, but sometimes I just may put in an erroneous number, even though it's a required field. So we just have to be very, very careful. And the consumer should, again, and I emphasize this so much that the consumer should know the purpose for the use of the data that, you know, an organization is collecting. And, and also the user should know about the organization, um, which is the data controller. So um, thank you. Um, yeah, and this is great. Actually, I put a link in because, you know, as we're back into the next week, I thank you so much for this presentation that we, um, this is just a quick infographic actually highlights what you were talking about in the chat where they put together, uh, this is the group that's put together all of the different uh, visualizations of the world's biggest cyber security attacks and breaches. Um, and so you can actually filter through it for which ones were because of human error, which ones were because of actual hacking, you know, which ones, how much money it cost them for these different hacks and other things. So human error may seem you know, pretty basic, but it is, it does account for a good number of the cybersecurity hacks, just, you know, simple things like not putting your password in. So um, uh, as we're, it, you know, looking through it, uh, we, you can take a look and see um, also the filters that you might be able to look at. And even in your classes, so if you're trying to bring the point home to your student, um, what exactly the cost of not securing your data would be for these different types of institutions and organizations. So uh, the next speaker, and if you have questions or if you have feedback or or types of uh, resources that you would like to also share on this topic, please put in the etherpad and we can transfer this link to the etherpad as well. Uh, oh yes, and it is a dissertation research on insider threats. 